it's me again, Jen, and welcome aboard of my channel. And yes, I'm back for another video. And for today's vlog, it's going to be very personal. It's because I'm going to share my cabin crew or flight attendant journey. We're in, I'm going to share my struggles before I applied, during the application, and right after I got in. And at the same time, I'm going to share of how I was able to decide on um, stepping out of my comfort zone and finally stepping into the courage zone. So if you are interested, then just keep on watching. But before that, Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified on my next video just like this one. And so if you're ready, let's begin. Just a heads up guys, this vlog, it's gonna be pretty long since I'll be sharing a certain chapter of my life. A chapter which I considered the most memorable yet challenging one and for me to tell my story as organized as possible I divided it into eight parts even if that's the case I hope you'll still spend time on watching my video I will definitely appreciate it and it really means a lot to me as well and so let's start my life before I became a cabin crew I was a call center agent with Convergis, now known as Concentrix. I handle basic troubleshooting for internet and phone service and a little bit of sales as well. After a year and four months, I transferred to JP Morgan Chase. It's not a BPO company, but the nature of the work is like of a call center, wherein I handle disputes for debit card transactions over the phone. Now with JP Morgan, that is where I was able to develop my communication and my leadership skills because after a year of taking in calls, I was able to sit in classes and discuss to the new hires of how the procedure or the process works and how to navigate with the tools as well. And after that, I was also given the opportunity to handle micro teams wherein we let the new hires take in calls for two weeks, somewhat like prepping them before we introduce them or endorse them to the production. And then right after that, I was also given the opportunity to handle a team. So for my team, which comprises of four people, now it became a team with 15 to 20 people. It was a big responsibility, that's why I was able to yeah, develop my leadership skills. And I was really happy at work because my workmates became my friends, my wave mates, or yeah, my wave mates became my brothers and sisters, and my manager became my, my mentor, and at the same time, my second father. Though I was happy with my job, I am enjoying the company of my workmates, but every time I'm done with work, by the time I'm already at home, it feels like something is missing. It feels like I'm trying to solve a puzzle with a missing piece. That is when I started asking myself, the chat, are you still willing to stay on your current job for the next two years or perhaps five years in your life? And after a month of asking myself that, I always get the same answer, and the answer is no. That is when I realized that I want to quit. When I finally realized that I wanted to quit, I gave myself a second chance. I also gave the company a second chance because in the first place, they were the reason why you became a better corporate employee. So what I did is that I took a time off. The timing was just so perfect as well because my cousin sponsored a trip to Singapore and that was my first ever international trip. But before we go further with our Singapore trip, I just would like to give you a background story because when I was in high school, I went to Baguio for national leadership training and we took a flight from Cebuto, Manila and that was my first ever plane ride experience. And the moment I stepped inside the aircraft, the first thing that I noticed were the flight attendant of how pretty and graceful they were. And that was also the same moment that I told myself, I want to be like that. But that desire was just a passing desire. Now going back to our Singapore trip when I had my second plane ride experience, the passing desire that I felt when I was in high school, it reignited. And this time, the fire was so big that I can no longer contain it. And at the same time, my travel continued. I went to Bacolod, to Tomagete, to Dipolog, and to Zamboanga. And realization hit me. I realized that every time I travel, I'm at my happiest state. I found the missing piece of my puzzle and that I wanted to become a flight attendant.
So that was around June of 2016 when Cebu Pacific conducted a mass herring for cabin crew in Summit Circle for Tasmania Cebu. And when I saw that, I said, okay, I will definitely apply. Now during the mass hiring, I asked someone to do my makeup because I don't have any idea about putting my own makeup during that time. And at the same time, I arrived at the venue at exactly 8 a.m., which is not a good idea. It's because when I went there, the line was so long, it was crazy long, I did not expect it to be that way. But I still tried my luck. Now, while I was taking the end of the line, I started observing the other applicants and I noticed that may mga mestiza, may mga chinita, may mga morena, but they have a very, very nice skin complexion. And at the same time, their makeup was so natural that it brings out their natural beauty. And I also noticed that they are so well dressed and I was really amazed of how they carry themselves while they are lining up. So basically, I lost my self-confidence, but I still went on. And when finally it was my turn, we were grouped into six, and we were asked to stand against a wall so that they can measure our height. And while doing so, they asked us to introduce ourselves by stating our nickname, our age, and how did we know about the mass hiring. After the brief introduction, the recruiter started calling names, and my name was not mentioned. And right after that, they asked us to, to stay on the side. I think it was three of us. And then the recruiter approached us and said, I'm so sorry, but you did not pass the physical screening. You may apply after six months. I was really sad because I was thinking that this is my way out and it slipped away. When I got home, I faced myself in front of the mirror. It sounds so dramatic, but it was really dramatic because I was so sad. And while I was facing myself in front of the mirror, I tried to assess what happened earlier that day. And you know what I learned? I learned that maybe the reason why I didn't make it because I was not ready. The fact that I asked someone to do my makeup, that alone could tell that I'm not ready and that I need to learn that path. Second reason is that I'm way too insecure and I don't have enough self-confidence. So what I did was I started taking care of myself. I started dressing up for work, I invested in some skincare products, and I practiced putting on my own makeup, especially with the kilay because that is where I think I need to practice the most. And I also went to the gym. And for how many weeks people started to notice the changes and they started giving compliments. And slowly I was able to build my self-confidence. But the insecurities, the thing about them, they will never go away. As a matter of fact, today I still have those insecurities, but the best thing that you can do is that you just have to manage them well. And I'm so proud to say that currently, I'm already good at handling them. And it's really true that if you feel good about yourself, you'll get to carry yourself well. December 11 of 2016, I will never ever forget that day. I went out with my friends when suddenly a Facebook notification popped up. A friend of mine, Prex, she tagged me on a post and the post says that there will be another cabin crew mass hiring for Cebu Pacific, same venue as the last time. My heart skipped for a bit because the mass hiring was scheduled the next day. I was really hesitant but I told myself, Jen, You've been preparing for a storm to come for how many months and then this is the storm that you've been preparing for and then why doubt yourself? So I went there. I went to the venue, I grabbed my best business attire, I pressed it well, I did my own makeup, viewed my, my resume one last time. And at the same time, I went to the venue at exactly 5.30 a.m. So I did the exact opposite the last time I applied. And to cut the story short, among the 200 plus applicants during that time, five of us got accepted. I was so happy. The moment that I received flying with you tag, it feels like it was my medal. It feels like it was my trophy. It feels like I truly deserve it because I prepared it for how many months? It was when victory tasted like the most delicious candy to a child. The very next day, I passed my resignation letter. 
My manager was so shocked. He didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming as well. Now, as part of the process, my manager's boss, our division leader, he called me for a retention talk. Now, we went inside a huddle room. We sat in a chair, facing each other. He took out my resignation letter that was handed by my manager, reads it, puts it down, faced me and said, why are you resigning? Worry about the promotion. And I was like, what? Seriously? And then he continued, yes, we're about to promote you, but your promotion will take effect by February, so that's going to be two months from now. You cannot disclose your salary increase since we're still finalizing with the HR, but yeah, expect the promotion by February. I was really confused. I was so shocked. I didn't know what to do, and I ended up retracting my resignation. Because honestly speaking, guys, that promotion, I was waiting for it for how many months? And now they're giving it now. So that's why I'm really, really confused. Why? It's because the duration of the training of being a flight attendant, it will take two months. And for that two months, we will not be receiving any training allowance at all unless we pass the training. And two months of no compensation is really a big deal and it's really a big loss not just for me but also for my family because I'm a breadwinner. And at the same time, the entire process of transferring to Manila will definitely cost me a lot. Why? The dormitory alone, it will cost me 14000 I need 14000 on the spot because I need to give one month advance, one month deposit. And at the same time, I need to purchase a luggage, I need to purchase my makeup, I need to update my makeup kit basically because what I have before are just basic makeup kit. And at the same time, I need to update my wardrobe, I need to purchase a lot of things, I need to process my requirements, my medical, and it will definitely cost me a lot. And it was December, guys. Magpapas ko, magbo birthday pa ko, and at the same time, magbo new year, may sinulog pa. But if I'll choose to stay, then I don't have to worry all of those things. As a matter of fact, it will definitely help me. The promotion will definitely help me and my family. I was torn between doing what is necessary and practical or chasing my dream. It was definitely a tough time for me. At the one day, a workmate of mine, um, she was Ange, um, she asked me now, why am I still there? Why am I not pursuing what I really want? Why am I staying? And then I told her, that I'm really scared because for me, JP Morgan was my home. It's my comfort zone and I'm really familiar with, with everything, how the process works and I am I'm really happy with, with everyone that I'm working with. Now, if I'm going to step outside of that comfort zone and, and become a flight attendant, it will definitely take a lot of courage and at the same time, I'm afraid and really, really scared to start all over again. The idea of starting over again, of you know, trying to try to build yourself in a certain company, trying to trying to excel again in to a craft that I don't really have any idea at all. And and knowing that being a call center agent and a flight attendant, they are two different worlds. And I really don't know and I'm afraid if, what if I cannot, I'm not that flexible enough to adapt with the changes. So I'm, I'm really scared. That's why maybe I retracted my resignation letter. It's because I'm really comfortable of where I am right now. Oh, right <laughs> But you know what, what you did? The day, the day after that, he tagged me on a post, or I, I don't know if she tagged me on a post, or he sent a photo, and that photo says that if your dream doesn't scare you, then it's not big enough. And then it hits me. That is when I realize that yeah, it's true. No one ever chased their dream that they are hundred percent sure of the outcome. No one ever try to chase their dream that they are not scared at all. The change is necessary. The sacrifices are necessary because by the end of the day, it's your dream that we're talking about. So, yun yeah. That is when I decided, okay, I will definitely pursue this, but I need a game plan. 
Now for the game plan, I consulted a lot of friends. I asked a lot of friends who are close to me. But yeah, the game plan was by February, we will be receiving a profit sharing. That's February 27th. Fast forward two months later, when February came, February 1st, I saw how much his salary increased and then I told myself, okay, it's not enough for me to stay. <laughs> After I received the profit sharing, I sent again, or I passed my resignation letter again, and then after I passed my resignation, I need to render for 30 days. The reason why I rendered for 30 days is because if things will not fall into place of me being a flight attendant, at least may babalikan pa ako. Because if I'll render for 30 days, it's for rehire. So, diba, at least I still have a backup plan. Now, after I sent or passed my resignation letter on February 28th, I did, I rendered for 30 days. So, it only means my last date or my effectivity date of my resignation will be March 30th. The thing is, during those one month of me rendering, that is when I also process all of my requirements, my medical, my papers, and all. And then two months before my effectivity date, I receive an email from Cebu Pacific that says, my training date or my transfer date from Cebu to Manila will be on April 1. And that the training will start on April 3. I was really shocked and I was really thankful because, you know, the timings are so perfect. If you'll check on the timetables, it's really perfect. Because timing lang na nag-resign ako by February 28th. I rented for 30 days because the effectivity will take effect March 30th. And then I'll transfer to Manila by April 1. So it only means I have one day, that's March 31, to prepare all of my clothes, all of my stuff, and I think and to bid goodbye to bid goodbye, but hindi babalik. But you know, to say goodbye to my friends, my workmates, to my family as well, and prepare all of my things. And the rest was history. Now, I'm talking to you. I'm sharing my journey, my entire journey of chasing my dream. And yeah, God is just really good. So basically, that's it, guys. That's my entire cabin crew or flight attendant journey. I hope you learned a lot of things. And you know, the entire process of pursuing what I want, of chasing my dream, of becoming a flight attendant, it didn't just happen overnight. It took me a lot of sacrifices, a lot of consultation with my friends, a lot of tears, a lot of decision making for me to fully decide that, yes, this is the path that I want. This is the career that I want. And if I were to share five things that I learned um, for the entire process of me pursuing what I want or chasing my dream, it'll be number one, rejection is necessary for you to improve yourself. Um, my first application, it became an eye-opener for me to improve myself, not just physically, but at the same time mentally and, and spiritually, that I need to work on my self-confidence and manage my insecurities as well. Second is that delays are God's way of saying that better things are coming. What He requires from you is patience. And third, I learned that there are certain battles that you don't have to take alone. So never be afraid to reach out. Because you see, when, when I try to decide what I really want, I did consult with my friends, my closest friends. Because sometimes when you're facing a problem, when you're part of the problem, you fail to see the bigger picture of the problem. So that's why you really can't decide of what you really want in life. Consulting your friends, your family, your loved one, your partner will definitely help you in seeing the entire picture of the problem. And they will be able to help you out on the things that you really need at that moment. So never, never be afraid to reach out. And fourth, believe that God is always working on the background. That no matter how messed up things are, always believe that He is working in the background. That if He will put you there, He will definitely put you there. Just trust Him. Okay? And the fifth, the last but not the least is, only the fearless can make things happen. So have courage. Because you know, um, I was really scared at first of putting aside my current work and pursue something that is far way different to my current work. It really took me a lot of courage to do that. If I didn't have the courage before of pursuing what I want, then I won't be here today sharing my story, my flight attendant, or my cabin crew journey to you guys. So have courage. Okay?